Welcome to Gospel Tangents, the best source for Mormon history, science, and theology. I'm Rick Bennett. I'm excited to have historian Bill Shepard on the show. He's an amazing historian and is a former president of the John Whitmer Historical Association. He's also a Strangite. We're going to learn more about James Strang's church, and Bill is a member of that church. We'll find out the name of it, which may sound very familiar. I have a feeling you will find it very familiar. So check out our conversation. Hey, I wanted to mention one other thing. I understand that some of my listeners have been signing on to Patreon, but don't know how to listen to the entire episode. So if you want to hear more than just this little snippet, all you need to do is download that little Patreon app. It's not focusing very well, but it's this one right here. And you click on it. And uh, once you sign in, it will take you to our latest uh, episode with Dr. Bill, or he's not a doctor, but he's Bill Shepard. He's an amazing historian. And then you can just hit the play button right there. And I'm Bill Shepard. You're listening to Gospel Tanks. See? And you can hear the whole thing. So it's going to be amazing. So for those of you who uh, didn't know that, just download the Patreon app on your phone. That's P-A-T-R-E-O-N. Do a to sign in. And then do a quick search for Gospel Tangents, and you can go right to the episode. So just wanted to share that. I've gotten a few emails, and uh, didn't know that people were, were having a little trouble with that. So anyway, let's hear from Dr. from Bill Shepard. All right, well, welcome to Gospel Tangents. I'm excited to have an amazing historian, and I'm going to start this a little bit different. But first of all, could you tell us who you are? Bill Shepard. I'm a, a life long string I ate, but maybe more important, uh, I'm a historian. Yes, you were the president of John Whitmer Historical Association. 2008, yes. Okay. We, had, uh, we had John Whitmer at Vorey, Wisconsin, or Burlington, Wisconsin, had a nice turnout of people, including Mike Quinn and Roger Lanius. Yeah, yeah. So you've been doing this for a long time. You've got a really awesome book. Do you want to show the camera? Uh, your book here, this was published in 1977. This is, um, this was basically intended to be to uh, get out the, the positive things about James J. Strang, his teachings, uh, and basically it, uh, basically why the other Mormon sects are not correct. So <laughs> it, uh, if I would redo it, I would redo it a lot more professionally uh, at this point in time, but it does have the positive things of uh, showing James J. Strang's teachings. Uh -huh. uh, I, I think they're quite significant. Yeah, yeah. Well, and let's few, do a few things here. So I don't normally do this, but so, would, so tell me the name of your church, because I think a lot of my listeners will be very surprised to hear the name of your church. It, it's actually the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, Strangite. <laughs> so that was, we had to put the appendage on. We couldn't use the term Church of Jesus Christ of Latter day Saints for obvious reasons. <laughs> so you've got, in fact, I think the only difference between your church name and my church name is I have a lowercase d and you've got a capital D with no hyphen. Right. And we have a hyphen right. lowercase. So that, that's pretty funny. So would you call yourself a Mormon? Oh, very definitely, um, uh, and we're asked many times, like just like the the LDS or Utah Mormons are asked, are, are you Christians? And uh, same problem, same uh, same identification, uh, same basic goals. Uh, Strang Ice except Joseph Smith certainly, uh, and they they break, of course, with the trans. Uh, with the transition to, to the Twelve Apostles and to Brigham Young. Mm -hmm. So there, there was a critical period there when Joseph Smith died in that uh, the LDS church, I will say, uh, even Brighamite, the Brighamite church did not have a prophet. Now the Strangites cl claimed that James J. Strang had been... Uh, an angel had appeared to him at the time that Joseph Smith was martyred and ordained him to be a prophet. And it's interesting to, to think that in this early period, uh, the Strangites had, uh, 
had a song by John Hardy. It wasn't theirs, but it was a church without a prophet is not a church for me. Oh, wow. And, uh, of course, at that point in time, until uh, 25th of December, I think, 18th, 27th, maybe, December 1847, the Brighamite Church reorganized with Brigham Young as a prophet as their head. Yeah, so... Yeah, do we know the name of the angel that ordained James String? He says that uh, he, the highest host of heaven. Now, some of our people interpret this to say that that was Jesus Christ, but I, I, I don't know. There's nothing like uh, Peter, James, and John, or Moroni, or, or what have you. But he said a, a host of heavenly beings. So, but we... In the Strangite tradition, it's so important to realize that, that we go back to uh, Hebrews uh, 5, 4, except a man be called of God, he can't be, you know, he has to be called. But Hebrews 7, 7, that the greater must ordain the lesser. So it's a standard thing forever among the Strangites that there wouldn't have been a power upon the earth to make a full prophet of God. And when I say prophet of God, I'll say first degree apostle at times, but the full uh, leader of the church, the man who's prophet, seer, revelator, and translator. So uh, again, we would, the Strangites would say that it took an angelic ordination. As Hebrews says, the lesser cannot ordain the greater. Yeah, so kind of as a counter argument with, with Utah Mormons, the, when, when, the, when Joseph Smith died specifically, the, uh, you know, Brigham didn't, uh, was an ordained prophet for about three years. And so a, a Strangite Mormon would say it's improper for the Quorum of Twelve to ordain Brigham because they don't have that power. They're the, they're the lesser. Now, the main argument of the Strangites is uh, Doctrine and Covenants uh, 43, 2 through 7. I, I can't emphasize that enough because that's a church law given in 1831. I don't remember the month, but it said that Joseph Smith will ordain a single, he will remain a full prophet of God until he is taken. And during that time when he is taken, he will ordain a single successor. And it says in there that this shall be a law unto you that you do not be deceived by somebody saying anything less. So again, the, the Strangite argument was strong because this was fundamental Mormonism. This was based upon, again, basically that DNC uh, 43 and 28 and, and, and many other, or several other sections. Okay, yeah. So I know, I think it might be surprising to a lot of people, but um, so following James Strang's ordination, a lot of very prominent members of the church joined with James Strang. Can you talk about some of these very influential people that joined? Well, yeah, and I don't know if I'd agree with that with that summation. Okay. Uh, uh, James J. Strang wasn't able to crack the inner circle. Now, I say inner circle, meaning the leading 12 apostles, Brigham, Heber, the Pratts, uh, John Taylor, and so forth. Uh, he did attract two malcontents in, in a way. Uh, and, and let me explain about John E. Page. John E. Page came to Strang's Banner for, uh, and was uh, active minimally for a year or two, but he was an apostle. But so when he joins James Strang, he uh, is very inactive. So he is not a big, he, he, he was a good catch in that he wrote some very good things and it gave the um, uh, impression that, that, that for the reliability of, of Strangism and so forth. And the other person, the other apostle that came to, to James Strang was William Smith. And William Smith uh, 
carried the Smith's name, and, and which was very important in that early time. And he would publish uh, articles and saying, the whole Smith family supports James J. Strang. And, and we, we want, I wonder historically if, if, if William was stretching the truth on that. So James Strang wasn't able to really crack the inner circle. After the Brighamites, if, if you will, leave Nauvoo, they're over in Iowa. Uh, let, let me regress and just say that James J. Strang, as quick as he, uh, after his ordination, he made it known to local people that this miraculous thing had happened to him. And uh, he claimed from that time on that he was a successor. To put some credence into that, uh, James J. Strang had moved to Burlington, Wisconsin uh, shortly before this, and he was living with uh, his wife's family and, and a few other Mormons, principally Aaron and Moses Smith, which were no relation to Joseph Smith. So they tried to make this message known uh, uh, Moses Smith carried the news to Nauvoo, and he was, uh, he gotten, he says that he was threatened with his life. Uh, Johnny Page says that when he came out for James Strang, that he was, that he escaped with his life. Now, I, I don't know the validity of that, but there would have been persecution against them. But early on, uh, Page would write Strang, and he say, "Don't come to Nauvoo; it wouldn't be safe." And and Strangites would cite that uh, Samuel Harrison Smith's somewhat mysterious death. William Smith would kind of uh, point at, at that he was put out of the way, and all. Uh, so, and then Page would would say that he he was threatened and so forth. And Strangites believe that the marshal at Nauvoo named John P. Green, uh, he came out, uh, and, and we have a testimony of a Charles Sumner to that effect, that uh, the marshal came out and he said, don't worry about this appointment, that uh, Joseph appointed this uh, young man up in Wisconsin, name of Strang, and so forth, like this. Uh, there's a lot of mystery uh, about Strangites would tell you that Joseph Smith left sealed documents that he is appointing this James Strang. Uh, the 12, of course, other than uh, uh, Taylor, I think, is still there, and Wilfred Richards. Richards would have probably had the document if, if, if indeed it didn't exist. That, uh, is this separate from the letter of appointment? Uh, this is referring to this letter of appointment. Okay. Uh, that uh, the letter would have been sent, and but there were documents left indicating that uh, this string had been been appointed, and so um, the idea is that that the twelve apostles deliberately. Uh, with malice of forethought, uh, did away with his appointment. So, uh, Strang, on the other hand, traveled around the area, traveled into Illinois and so forth, uh, but he didn't have, didn't make much of a splash initially. Uh, but you, but in, uh, say, February, March of 1846, he has some strong missionaries in Nauvoo, and you have uh, the Brighamites, of course, across the river waiting, but you have Orson Hyde there as their representative. And Johnny e. Page and Hyde have a debate, and uh, uh, Johnny e. Page is going to cite DNC uh, one uh, DNC 43, 2 through 7, and, and other places to say that, that the law says that Joseph Smith had to appoint a single successor, and this successor had to be, had to be ordained by an angel. 
And uh, Hyde is, is quoted as saying that we don't go by the law. Uh, you can look at my article in uh, dialogue on this, but uh, Johnny Page, but so, and and according to to the 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 records of recording, uh, Hyde is going to say we don't go by the law, we go by the spirit, and 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 let me say that uh, there weren't masses of people converted at Nauvoo. Uh, there was a significant amount that didn't go west, of course, and are going to make their way uh, to Vori, uh, Strang's gathering place, which he said was translated to be Garden of Peace. Uh, initially, James J. Strang is going to attract a significant amount of people. Now, uh, Mormons rarely told the truth when they said, uh, they talked about how many people that they had in their church, you know, that we, in this uh, conference today, uh, we heard that Joseph Smith had 200,000 people in his church, which, <laughs> oh, that was funny. yeah, and maybe 14 or 15 or, you know, 20 or so forth. So we, we honestly don't know how many people are going to come to Vori. Uh, they're, they're going to come and they're going to be very poor. These were not the up in as a general rule. These were all, all Mormons were poor back then, right? It, Pretty right, much. <laughs> right, right, and, and and exactly, other than a few of the hierarchy. Right. Uh, but but they had probably been plundered in Missouri, uh, and certainly they're going to lose out when they leave Nauvoo. So they come to Vori, and they're not going to 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 have fancy homes at least for a long time. They're going to live out of their wagons. They're going to dig shanties. Uh, they're going to be really poor. I hope you enjoyed our conversation with Bill Shepard. In our next conversation, we'll talk about one of James Strang's most prized converts, Martin Harris. Wasn't Martin Harris, didn't he join with the Strang well, for a while? And, and you know, that, that triumphant mission of string out east uh, the the uh, three witnesses and and and, and most of the eight witnesses are now realized some of them would be dead but so but they acknowledge string they acknowledge him so for a brief instant and, and I I would say a, 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 it's very short uh, string is going to uh, make these grandiose, you know, there's this, he is attracting a lot of people. If you'd like to hear the entire interview uncut, please subscribe to patreon.com slash gospel tangents. And for just $5 a month, you can hear the entire interview without any interruption. If you'd like a paperback version of our transcripts, go to amazon.com and do a search for Gospel Tangents interview. Also, if you'd like to give the money to me and not Amazon, please subscribe on my website and I'll be able to send you a transcript as soon as they are completed and click the subscribe button. You can also find our latest information on facebook.com slash gospel tangents as well as we're on Twitter at Gospel Tangents. And don't forget to subscribe on Apple Podcasts. The link is at tinyurl.com slash gospeltangents, and you can subscribe there. Also, please give us a five-star review. If you want to support all of the podcasts as part of the Dialogue Podcast Network, go to lyceum.fm, that's L-Y-C-E-U-M dot F-M, and do a search for Dialogue Podcast Network or Gospel Tangents, because, you know, that's a pretty cool one, too. Thanks again for listening. Click here to subscribe, here for a transcript, and over here we've got some of our great videos. Thanks again.